What's up everybody? It's Jet here, finally coming at you with lesson two of our Perfect Pitch Ear Training course. Sorry it's taken me so long to make this video. I've been super busy with gigs, but then I started getting a whole bunch of requests to go ahead and make that second video and share another exercise. Promised a few people last week that I would try to do it this week, so here it is, making it for you today. All right, so, but before we move forward, if you haven't seen lesson one, pause this video, scroll down to the description and click the link to lesson one there because it's really important that you watch that video and understand the theory of perfect pitch and what it is. Because if you don't do that, you'd be in danger of approaching all of these exercises with a completely wrong mindset. And not that you're wrong for doing that, but I'm trying to save you from the headache and the time <laughs> of doing these the wrong way because I've done it. I think it's natural for us to want to have perfect pitch now. So what we'll do is we'll end up rushing through these exercises, not understanding what perfect pitch actually is. We're gonna be trying to do these exercises as if it was a relative pitch ear training course. Relative pitch is all to do with the mind's understanding of what the ear hears. Perfect pitch has to do with perception. It's pure perception. It's a feeling, okay? Like, so for example, you go to a rose garden, you see a beautiful flower, and just imagine for a moment that you haven't learned the names of your primary colors, red, blue, green, yellow, but you go and see this flower and it's just beautiful and it strikes you and, and you feel a, a certain feeling of joy and, and happiness when you're looking at this flower and you see this beautiful color, this depth of color, this richness of this color and of this flower. And even though you don't know what that color is or what that color is called, you still feel it. You still, you still derive a certain amount of pleasure and joy from observing this beautiful flower. Well, it's the same thing in music. You already enjoy music, you just haven't learned to identify the tones, okay? And so relative pitch training is the, 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 the type of listening that we do with relative pitch ear training is a horizontal. It's like the surface of the water of a lake, right? It's horizontal listening. Okay, the relationships between music, seeing how music flows and moves right along. So every time we're listening to music and, you know, when we go to college and we learn all of our music theory, we're listening very, very surface. It's very horizontal and it's very um, mathematical. It's very mental. You know, music nerds like me and, whole, and I'm sure you are too, you know, we're like, we love that stuff, you know, perfect fifth, dominant seven, you know, we, we, we kind of fancy ourselves as, you know, geniuses of some kind, you know, because we know our music theory and that's good. It's very important. I highly recommend every musician, beginner to advance, know all their music theory, okay? Know your relative pitch ear training. That's very important, but perfect pitch, this is the artistry. This is where we, we, we get to develop a sensitivity, a certain ability to perceive these individual tones the same way that a, a painter knows his colors, okay? In relative pitch, we're hearing horizontally, we're listening horizontally. In perfect pitch, we learn how to listen vertically. And that's what this training is all about. Two phases to our training. Phase one is preparing the ear to transition smoothly into phase two. Phase one is tilling the soil. It's doing exercises and drills designed to train the ear to start listening vertically. And the more you do these exercises, the more you'll start to feel the ear opening up. And one thing I wanna to emphasize to you is that we don't rush and we don't chase these sounds. We don't go after them. It's like a cat. If you want to pet a cat, you just don't run up to a cat and grab it. Good luck with that, right? No, it's it, you let the cat come to you and it's the same thing with perfect pitch ear training. These drills are designed to allow your ear to, to relax, to settle in and let the sounds come. Take it from me, I've done it. Whenever I've tried to force or rush the ear, it just seemed to resist it even more. It was only until I finally figured out that I needed to just chill and approach every exercise with a certain childlike wonder, a childlike innocence. That's why I think children pick this up better than adults, more thoroughly and more quickly than adults because they're not stuck in their heads. They're perceiving it 
vertically. They're already like, they hear it, okay? So that's what these drills are for. So in phase one, I don't be concerned too much about identifying the pitch colors right away. Because in phase one, we're just cultivating the ear. We're just kind of easing it into this new way of listening. Because all our lives, we've just listened horizontally. Now for the first time, we're listening vertically. When was the last time you just listened to a note? Just, just like that. No, we're too busy always listening to, we wanna just get all fancy with it, right? But when was the last time we just listened to that? Every note is a stone at the bottom of the lake which has its own color. The surface of the lake relative pitch gives us the illusion that the colors are moving. It gives us the illusion that they're moving, but these pitch colors never change. These are the stones at the bottom of the lake. So once we break the surface of the water, we could start to dive down to go and explore all the different colors at the bottom of the lake. All right, so that's what phase one is all about. We're not trying to identify the tones in phase one, although we will have some exercises that kind of start to inch towards that. We're not gonna rush it. The whole point is listening. Every single exercise is all about learning to listen vertically. So it's all of these exercises are super simple, but don't let its simplicity fool you. Don't let it fool you into trying to rush. I guarantee you, if you rush it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work, all right? So just trust me on that. So I think I've gotten all my important points out of the way. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna show you your next exercise. I'm actually gonna give you two today. Again, this is very, very simple, but don't be fooled by the simplicity, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is break the surface of the water, all right? And the way we do that is through unlocking. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to reach out to your piano. Oh, by the way, when you pick your instrument for these trainings, stick to that one instrument. Unlike relative pitch, we need to give the ear, the space, and the time, and the opportunity to settle into one timbre. I recommend using the piano because it's such a universal, universal timbre. I think everybody recognizes the sound of a piano. So if you're a singer or a violinist, I, recommend, I would recommend the piano because we will be doing some chords exercises as well. Um, if you can get a synthesizer that has flute sounds on it, for example, and your primary instrument is the flute, you could use that synthesizer with the flute sounds so that you could play like flute chords. That way your ear is already, you know, familiar with your primary instrument. So, you know, same thing with guitar and all other instruments. Get a synthesizer that has saxophone sound, guitar sound, flute sound, trumpet sound. So that, you know, of course it's not gonna be perfect like your actual like, trumpet, but at least the timbre will be there. Again, we just want to pick one timbre so that we don't tax the ear with having to deal with so many different timbres. Later on, when we have developed perfect pitch, we'll be able to play around and we'll be able to hear all of these pitch colors in all of those different timbres. But for now, as we're just starting the train, we want to just give our ear the space with one timbre alone, okay? So I'm gonna be showing you all of these exercises moving forward with just this little piano keyboard, okay? This is a Casio, probably the best sounding $50 keyboard I've ever heard, <laughs> all right? So um, I obviously don't have a piano on my van. So here's your, your next exercise. We're gonna reach out and we're only gonna focus on the white tones for now. We're gonna reach out and play any two tones harmonically. Harmonically means to play tones at the same time. Melodically means playing tones one after the other. So this would be harmonic, this would be melodic. All right, so we're gonna blindly reach out and play any two white tones that are separated by one white tone. And for you music theory scholars out there, you know what that is. It's a major third and a minor third, all right? 
we're not worried about that because this isn't about relative pitch here training this is perfect pitch so we're going to reach out any two white tones separated by one white tone it would look like this and without looking we're just going to play it harmonically okay and we're going to listen listen enjoy that sound okay now to prove that you've heard it correctly we're gonna sing these notes from bottom to top from the lowest note to the highest la, la. then we're gonna check good we got it right when we get it right we move on to the next one again any two white tones separated by one Play it harmonically. Listen. Now to prove that you heard it right, sing it from the bottom note to the top. La, la. Good. Now, again, blindly reaching out. Any two tones. Da, 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 da. Uh, let's say like we go over here. Well, let's go over here. All right, any two tones. Listen first. We're unlocking. This is an unlocking exercise because we want to break through that surface. To prove that you heard it right, sing it from bottom to top. La, la. Uh-oh, something's not right there. La, la. When you get it wrong, the last thing you want to do is move on to the next example. Ear training is about correcting it when you get it wrong. It's not ear training if you get something wrong and move right on to the next thing. The ear training actually happens when you correct the mistake. All right, let's listen again. Uh-oh, let's say I can't, still can't hear it. I'm still hearing la, la, <laughs> okay? Then we play it one at a time. La, la. Ah, there it is. La. Now that we've corrected it, we play it again. Listen and sing. La, la. Simple as that. Remember to correct your mistakes. Otherwise, you're not ear training. You're just wasting your time. <laughs> that's what you're doing. All right. So that's your next exercise. And I promised I'd give you a second one today. This second one is a meditation. I like to end all of my ear training sessions with a meditation because I find that it's a good strong way to finish an ear training session. Because when I've made a whole bunch of mistakes, I wanna finish confident and strong. And I find that the best way to do that is through a very simple meditation. And again, like all of the exercises I'm gonna be showing you in the future, this is designed to start training the ear to listen vertically. So this is your first ear training meditation. We're going to use the notes C and D. And I want you to do it like this. We're going to reach out and play C. Now listen to that C. Close your eyes and feel that C. Now, close your eyes and hear it in your mind without playing it. You've just listened to it. And I want you to see if you can hear it loud and clear in your mind. Just imagine that C in your mind. Once you think you're imagining that C, sing it. La. Listen again to test yourself. Okay, imagine that C again. La, then test. All right. Now we'll do the same thing with D. D. Again, first we listen. 
then without playing it, close your eyes and imagine that D in your mind. D, then sing it. La, then check it. La. Now, without playing it, see if you can imagine the C in your mind again. We've just done the D. Now let's see if we can imagine the C in our mind before we even play it. La. Now check. And if you're a little bit off, that's okay. Just listen to it again. Feel it. La. Enjoy it. La. When you start to feel happy just hearing one note, then you're doing it right. Then, some, then, some, then your ear is opening up. Because again, it's like seeing a flower. There's nothing scholarly <laughs> or, or overly complicated about looking at a beautiful flower, right? It's not like relative pitch or we're thinking about all this. We're just perceiving it. It's just there and it, it strikes us. When you have that same feeling just by hearing one note, you hear that C. La. And it gives you a certain pleasure and joy. Let's see if we can imagine the D. La. D. And that's your ear training meditation. And I'm going to give you more in the future. This is just the first one. So that's how I'd, I'd like for you to end your ear training sessions every day. And I want to re-emphasize that you don't want to do too much every day. You don't want to tax your ear with 30 minutes of this stuff, okay? 10 minutes is plenty. You can take a 30 minute shower, but 10 minutes is plenty, all right? You don't want, sometimes you'll find that if you over train your ear, then you can't hear anything. Has that ever happened to you? I know it's happened to me. So just 10 minutes every day. The, the important part is that you do it every day. It's a lot better than two hours once a week. It's just like any other musical practice. A little bit every day is always better. So that's what I want you to do. Same thing with your ear training. I also want to mention that when you practice on your piano, stay in the middle range of the piano. We don't need to tax our ear with the deep muddy tones or the super, super high tones. Just stay in the middle range, like, you know, maybe two octaves below middle C up to two and a half octaves above middle C. Don't want to go too high. It's too hard to hear that high. We don't need to tax the ear with that. We just want to focus on what we can hear right in the middle, a nice, easy range. All right, so that's it for your lesson two today. I hope you found this valuable and helpful. If you have any questions or concerns, leave it in the comments below and I'll reply as quickly as possible. And again, don't forget to go watch that lesson one video if you haven't already. And as a matter of fact, it couldn't hurt to watch it again, maybe a few times so that you can really internalize and understand what perfect pitch is so that you're approaching all of these exercises with the right mindset. All right. So that you will have actual like results and you're not forcing your ear, which will stunt your results. All right. Okay. That's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. Leave your comments, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.